Okay, we're 24 hours away from the Molten Sultans' first game of this year's PSL. I'm joined by head coach Johan Bota. Hi, Johan. Sam. Now, we are not far away from the start of the big tournament. How is the feeling in the camp and how excited are you to get going? Oh, very excited. I think, um, you know, we've, we've got a, a good team, exciting team. We've, we've had two pretty good warm-up games. You know, results didn't go away, but we got to see um, different guys perform and you know, hopefully now the, we have a better idea of where we're going to go with our first 11 and then from there hopefully we can uh, get a couple of results this weekend. Yeah, there's, there's only 24 hours to go but you're still missing a few key players out with the big bash at the moment. How does that play into the way in which you plan your, your team selection for the early few games of the competition? Yeah, it does sort of hold us back a little bit. Obviously, you know, James Vince has played really well in, in, back in Australia. Dan Christian's a a key player for the Renegades. So, you know, those guys will come in with a lot of confidence and they are playing well at the moment, but it gives opportunities to other guys. Uh, you know, we've got uh, two English guys, Laurie Evans and Tom Moores. Obviously, Chris Green has just come in. Andre Russell just arrived. Um, and then Johnson Charles. So we, we've got five internationals to pick from for the weekend. And, uh, you know, hopefully one or two of those can, can stand up and put in match-winning performances and, and get our team rolling. And then it would be nice to get those other guys in once you know we've got uh, a win or two on the board. What do you make of the players that you've not come across before, the local Pakistanis or potentially some of from the overseas that you've started to work with in the last few days? Well, I think out of the local talent, um, you know, that was sort of I didn't really know them at all. Like you said, coming in, um, even in a draft, you know, we had to to back harder and and the crew and Raymond to to pick the best uh, local talent. I think that's where Raymond's been a, a key for us is to a guy who's worked with the Pakistani players for a long time. He's obviously on the local uh, circuit all the time. And, and um, you know, I think we, we've picked really well this year. We've got three options in the uh, emerging list. So, so that's good. I think last year that uh, you know, was a problem area for us. We probably only had one to pick from. And uh, you know, if that doesn't work out, then you're sort of stuck with that. So now we've got three bowlers, which is great, and three different types of bowlers. Um, so, you know, we've got options in, in that department. Obviously, we've got, you know, quite a bit of uh, experience around that. So it's obviously new into our team and the two international quicks uh, and Abbas, obviously, he didn't get a chance last year, but he's been in, in red hot form uh, all, so far this year. So hopefully we can, you know, with those three and some of the international all-rounders, uh, at least our bowling will look pretty solid. I think our batting is going to be, it might be tested. I think this is the best um, bowling competition in the world. So. You know, we're going to have to bat well and, and conditions aren't always uh, that straightforward. It, it can be low, sc scrappy games and um, you know, hopefully we can make enough runs. What are you expecting from the playing surfaces out here in the UAE? Obviously, you get to, to Pakistan later in the tournament, but initially, what are you expecting? Yeah, with stats and, and the past three years, you sort of have an idea and, and pass scores is anything from sort of 130 to 147. So it, it's not high if you... If you look at the World T20 game at the moment, it's pretty low. So, and you can see why. You know, some good, good bowling. It's actually the wickets sort of get a bit tired and are a bit tired because there's so much cricket that that gets played in the UAE. So, you know, like I said, we'll have to bat smart. We'll have to get our top sort of five or six to to use most of the balls, and you know, no one's going to score quicker than them. So, we're going to have to will rely heavily on those guys to, to get us to some sort of a total or if we have to chase and um, to hopefully get us over the line. I think in these conditions it's hard to come in, you know, at seven, eight, nine to go at 150 strike rate straight away. So we're going to, you know, rely heavily on our top order. Why do you think that this competition out of all of the high quality T20 leagues in the world is the best for bowling? I just think the local bowling is, is so good, so skillful. I think obviously speaking to a few of the guys, Pakistani wickets are really flat. So the guys have got some, some skill and you've got to have skill to, to bowl in such flat wickets. And now when they come to, to UAE where the wickets do a little bit, it spins a little bit more, it sort of just you know, shows it up a little bit more. So I think most teams in this competition go with a lot of local bowlers and they sort of local bowlers versus international batters. And, and you know, we, we won't be a lot different. We've got a couple of all-rounders at least, you know, Andre Russell, uh, Chris Green. So, and most teams sort of go that way, but uh, it's pretty much a, a, a local bowler versus the international batters. You know a bit about Chris Green, don't you, from Guyana and uh, also playing against him, I would imagine, in the Big Bash. Can you give us an idea of what you see in him? 
Um, yeah, I had to work pretty hard to get him to Guyana, but uh, a, a very good player. Obviously, you know, someone that uh, has done well around the world. He's, he's done really well in Big Bash, and, and you know, that's a tough place to ball spin. Um, obviously, all three departments, which is the key. If you if you want to get into the franchise system, you, you know, these days you can't just be a finger spinner and you're not great in the field and you can't really hold the bat. It, it doesn't work like it where Chris can can cover all three departments pretty pretty well. Um, he batted really well in the big bash recently, so so that's nice. And Guyana on, on tough wickets, he struggled a little bit, but uh, he's hitting the ball really well at the moment. And his bowling, you know, he's smart. He's, he tries to stay one step ahead of the batter and um, he can bowl at you know, any stage of the 20 hours. I think that's also a key. You know, he can bowl in the first six, he can bowl as late as, you know, what the captain needs. And, and that's crucial. You know, a lot of spinners, well, not a lot, but some, you know, prefer just at 7 to 15. Mm -hmm. And that's tough to fit your overs in, you know, with all the other bowlers. And you might only bowl two or three on the night where with Chris, um, you know, he goes anywhere in the 20 overs. And Thunder have been using him up at five or six as well in, in the past big bash. Would you be looking to bat him that high? Um, yeah, six is, is a possible option. I think with, with Andre and our team at five, that, that he'll probably be five. Um, but, you know, sort of our six, seven, eight will have to be flexible. You've got Shahida Fridi in there. You've got Hamad Azam, who's, you know, a really good local batter. So sort of not to give it all away, but I think that's sort of six, seven, eight for the next few games. Um, and we'll back those guys and uh, hopefully they take the opportunity and uh, makes the selection a whole lot easier. How important is having the likes of Shoaib Malik, Shahid Afridi, Andre Russell there to call on on the pitch when you've got a few of the younger guys a little bit less experienced? How is it? How important a role will they have to play? Not just with bat and ball, but in terms of speaking with their with their younger teammates. Yeah, that's huge. Um, you know, even just with this week, three or four days we've been together. Whatever you know, Shoaib says. I'm sure whatever Shahid says, the low young guys will just hang on those words. Um, but yeah, it's great to have such experience on the field, especially when it gets close and then, you know, the game gets uh, down to, to the you know, nitty gritty of you know, run a ball or you need you know, sort of 20 or 10, that type of thing. And for the experienced players, just to calm everyone down, hopefully you know, be there in that, in that situation with a young guy, that will be ideal. You know, talk them through it, help them through it, and it will be great if, if we can have some of those young players get us over the line. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure those experienced guys are looking forward to do that. Um, Shab's obviously played really well, and, and you know, he's smart. He plays well in these conditions. He understands, you know, that we, we need a big tournament from him. And um, you know, if he, he can deliver along with all the senior guys, as you've said. And for you personally, having now called time on your playing career, we're talking as your big bash team is playing in the semi-final, uh, and you're ready to coach in a different competition. Uh, several thousand miles away. What's what's going through your head at that moment? You can't possibly allow yourself to think too much to the Hobart Hurricanes at the minute. No, not at the moment. Obviously, that's that's been a few weeks since I've been there. I really enjoyed my, my season with them. The guys played some really good cricket, so hopefully they do get over the line today and, and give themselves a shot on you know in the final on Sunday. But uh, the game's pretty delicately poised at the moment, so hopefully you know they can do that. Um, yeah, the switch. I sort of had to make the call, you know, along with a couple of injuries and being here for the prep week. I think that's the most important thing is this, you know, past five days is the most important in the tournament to set everything up, to get our team going in the right direction. And, you know, if I wasn't here, I would miss the first two games. And, and that doesn't look good. And it's not ideal as a head coach to, to miss your team's first couple of games. So that was the big call and, um, you know, had, had to make it. And I th I'm happy with the decision. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had a lot of playing. I've had 19 years of it, so I'm happy with the uh, decision I made. So it's just a sort of combination of circumstances put together that it just fitted and it was the right time to do it. Yeah, definitely. I think um, you know, with body starting to, <laughs> to wear down a little bit and uh, needing to be here, uh, those were the two main factors. And uh, you know, like I said, I think it's uh, definitely the right decision. How long were you grappling with the idea? Was it something that only just came up or was it over a period of a few months? Or? Uh, yeah, a few months. I think um, with meeting Hyder and you know, our staff in, in October, I met him in October in Abu Dhabi when we had that short little tournament and we talked about it and they said, yeah, we'll make the decision when it gets closer to the time. It's always the easy thing to say, but uh, you know, then the Hurricanes started playing really good cricket and it came down to crunch time. And, 
had to make a decision. Luckily for, for the Hobart Hurricanes, Kaz was available and he's, he's just got three wickets in that BBL semi-final. Um, that sort of made it a little bit easier for them to, to make that call. Um, and yeah, it, you just, I just had to make a decision. I think I made it with four group games to go. Just to say, you know, I can't just play till the 9th of Feb and leave you guys with the semi-final right around the corner. So they had a, a you know, four games at least with Kaz there, and um, I think the boys did, did pretty well. So, you know, hopefully they can pull it through tonight and uh, continue on Sunday. What type of head coach are you? You know, you get different kinds. You get the disciplinarians, you get the thinkers, you get the real tacticians, the numbers men. What, do you put yourself in a certain bracket? Uh, not yet. I think you sort of obviously like numbers and stats to use that and, and explain and talk to the young guys about, you know, where the game's heading. Um, and learn that way. And uh, discipline-wise, I think that's just, you know, natural for me. That's how I've played my game. That's, you know, how I've prepared. Um, hopefully I can, you know, rub off on a, on a couple of the young guys on sort of what's required to be a professional cricketer. Because I think in the franchise system, it can be a little bit dangerous. You know, you go from tournament to tournament to tournament and you don't really have sort of time to look after your own body and prepare and just step back for as for a second, it's just as, as if you just change colours all the way, all the all year round. So hopefully, I can, um, along with the senior guys, just pass on some some experience. Um, yeah, but I suppose I, I still need to find that that one standard. I think you know a little bit of everything at the moment. I really enjoyed my time at Guyana with a really young group, and um, you know two or three players really stepped up there, which uh, we hope can ha can happen here for us. Um, and, and that will probably make it a really successful tournament. And that, if people still ask me about Guyana, I reckon the three players that came through who hadn't played at all before this last CPL was probably the highlight for me. I know we lost in the final, we did that well, but you know, for Shimron Hitmeyer, Kimo Paul and um, Shafane Rutherford to come through, between all of that was probably the highlight for me. So if you can do the same here and have three of your guys come up and be standout players in PSL, that, that would be just as satisfactory as a lot of wins? Definitely. I think, uh, you know, those two combined would be the ideal. I think if you sort of, you know, I'm thinking back now to Australia, if you're a state coach, you sort of want to get players to play for Australia. And um, I think that's, that's definitely happening, especially with Islamabad, you know, with Shadab Khan and Fahim. Those guys have done really well here and then they've sort of stepped up. So hopefully we can get a couple of young guys uh, in our system do that, even if it's not this year and if they can do it over the next couple of years. Um, because as we know, World Cups finish a few careers. Um, you know, you either go out on a high or um, teams get changed because the team didn't do what uh, everyone wanted them to do. So, you know, if it doesn't happen now with this 2019 World Cup coming up, hopefully a few opportunities open up for, for those guys um, in the future. Great. Well, good luck for the tournament. Thanks for speaking to us. Not a problem. Thank Cheers you. Thank you.